Hi, Bonnie. I wanted to be able to give you some suggestions because of your question over in the Five Pencil Method community about uh, some help with drawing the proportions in your dog picture. Uh, I think there are some things I can help you with. I don't want to get too complicated, and yet I'll show you several, I hope, of the same thing so that you can incorporate the straight edge. You could even do the divider, too, uh, and have some opportunity to start seeing your picture a little differently. It might be that your picture is very, very small. I have no idea. I think you're doing a great job and you're probably, again, much closer than you may think. And so if I could give you a couple opportunities to tweak this, maybe it won't be quite so intimidating and you won't feel so lost. So I'm working in Photoshop and it is hard because I I don't have as much control and I'm working uh, uh, with two separate images that uh, it's a little difficult to show a continuous angle through from one to another, but I wanted to let you know that one of the great advantages you have is recognizing angles. The other thing I want to tell you about is to uh, decide what's in front and what's in back. There's usually something blocking your view of another part of the head or neck or whatever it happens to be. So if you can take the extra effort to decide what is blocking your view. This is really going to help you put things back where they belong and pull the things forward that you need to uh, you know, have uh, pulled forward. So you have dimension. The angles are going to help you see a lot of things. And I think that it's possible that with a brindle dog that some things are starting to look like form of the body when it really is maybe a shadow or maybe uh, you know a coloration of the fur and I think you really need to be able to maybe make that blow up so that you have a larger reference photo to go to with and uh, and then again when you are laying out your picture or you just start drawing and then you want to start verifying uh, the right angle for something you want to make sure that you have your photograph or your reference parallel with the paper, first of all, and then as you lay out your drawing, you want to try, especially at this stage, when you're starting to recognize, uh, you know, what makes up good proportion. And so you can start seeing those angles and how they start creating shapes and where the intersections are. You'll start seeing angles all over this. Maybe it's from the corner of an eye to a corner of an eye. Maybe it's from, uh, you know, an ear to an eye. You can make up points of reference anywhere you want and start visualizing what kind of a line would be between those two things. But you must keep this parallel. And so then you can move it up and down and you can decide okay, I see an angle here, let's say, for the top of the head. And if I go through into my drawing, I actually see that it isn't a consistent angle like that. I actually have quite a dip here, and it goes back up. Well, we could eliminate that. Let me go ahead and see what it's like to go ahead and take that off. And I'll just do the best I can in Photoshop here to give you a little bit of an idea. And let's just remove this. Okay, now we also see angles and we can compare those things. Sometimes I'll put a straight edge from, from here to there and I'll see how this arcs out of that straight edge. It gives me a wonderful idea to start maybe even recognizing a curve I didn't even realize was there. But as you see this in your drawing, you actually have it going the opposite way. And so again, if we could just remove a few things and then I'll put a few other marks to show you some of the angles that I think are important. I think you might be able to start getting on track. If you see this angle on the top of the ear, it's not that it's that important. That, that ear could change drastically, but it does give you a great reference point. If you, again, put your straight edge right along, uh, right along the photograph and run it over into the... Uh, let's see, did you pick that up? Let's see, did I... No? Let's see. This angle here for the ear... And also, you could come up here and you say, where does it line up with the other ear? Well, this is a, maybe an important angle. So then you'll see how that lines up over here. And if you look at that in relationship to the photograph, you'll see that this is really going another angle. So here's another great clue. And you can have these as anchors and opportunities to build off of and uh, then use that as a reference point for something else. Now, 
uh, I think that there are a couple things in here that maybe uh, would have helped you with angles, like going from one corner of the eye to the other. I think this gets a little far down, but it's really common, whether you're drawing people or dogs, to maybe misinterpret the form of the eye. And I think if you look at this, you'll see that the opening of the eye is much smaller than what you're uh, suggesting here in the drawing, where you have these large corners that go out. So let's let's take a little bit of that and get it focused back into the form of the actual uh, dog. If you look at this uh, photograph, you'll see that this is very round at the top. And look and see how this actually comes down, what angle it does. You can put your straight edge against there again and then reference your drawing. This would probably be a little bit more round. We also have some perspective. So over here, it's the same issue. We have this going down. Once you start looking at the direction things are going in and being able to verify them with your straight edge, and then even taking your divider and doing some comparative measurements, you'll be able to see and correct as you go your drawing, and it will start falling together much, much better proportionally. Now, I think that if you look at the center line, uh, which I always want to establish on a face or a dog, uh, you know, it doesn't make any difference if it's a living being, there's usually a center part of its symmetrical face. And so we can see that this is pretty symmetrical, but then the dog's nose is turned up. And I think the only problem is, again, maybe it's because the photograph was a little small, I think that in the photograph, this is probably shadow over here. It is not going to make sense to have that nose suddenly turned off to the left there as we're looking at it, and it's right, and have it be way out of uh, being symmetrical. So let's go ahead and lighten that up. One more thing, I think that possibly the shadow here. You're, you're definitely going to be having a shadow side, but it could be, again, a little bit more coloring in the fur. You're making it more of a dimensional edge, and this is one of the things that I talk about a lot we want to make sure that clean edges represent separations in dimension. And we don't want to make contours and some of those things compete with them because they start dominating real quick. So let's just lighten that up for right now and take the focus off of it. So now we're back to the actual structure. So now let me go ahead and take my, my brush and uh, I will try to pick out a little uh, darker color here, and we'll just block in a few things. We'll just block in, oh, I don't really need to go that dark. Let's do something a little lighter. Now we want to decide what's in front and what's in back. What can't we see anymore because it's being blocked from our view? And I think you'll see some very interesting things happen. One of the things is that uh, 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 the snout here, I think, goes behind the muzzle. Well, I guess this is all the muzzle, isn't it? But anyway, this jawline goes behind that. So now we've pulled that part forward. This isn't all going to be that accurate, but I think it will help you maybe start looking at your picture a little different. As we see this neck coming down here, we'll see the, shadow of the uh, shoulder going behind and disappearing. If we see this side of the face going up here, we see it going behind the ear. And when we start placing things at their proper, uh, you know, dimension where something, again, is behind, I think it will really help you in starting to establish good proportion, perspective, and uh, uh, dimension to your picture. So I hope that some of these simple things are going to be helpful. And if you need some additional uh, help, I have a video uh, that I did over... Uh, I think it's in the uh, YouTube uh, uh, critiques, but it's also in our tips and tricks, at least over on 5-Pencil Method, the tutorials. And uh, it is uh, other tips and tricks, and then how to lay out a drawing. And even though it's about uh, an eye, and just showing you again how to just incorporate your straight edge and your divider a little bit, you don't have to do every bit of your layout with this, but it'll be a great assistance for you to establish, again, some of those very important 
angles or maybe size relationships from one thing to another. And I think this will really help you in being able to feel better when you're constructing your picture and having a more accurate uh, uh, demonstration of your dog. So I hope that helps and uh, we can maybe uh, address it again later. I know you asked about fur, but the tapered stroke is going to be a great opportunity. Uh, and uh, believe it or not, uh, there are a few places where you want to still go past something. You can't go past anything without a straight, a clean edge. And so those uh, uh, strokes can give you an opportunity to put maybe something past in between hairs, a little more of a shadowed area, deeper past the outer part. The, the hair is really difficult because some people try to depend entirely on their stroke to make the hair and then you have white spaces in between which don't say dimension or depth or shadow. So anyway, we can get into that later. What I really wanted to concentrate on is look at your picture, see your angles, use your straight edge to verify them and uh, look at your uh, divider is a great opportunity to see some uh, comparative measurements and I think it'll change the whole equation. So. Talk to you later. See you over on the community.